It looks like it's just getting smaller, but really, it's getting to be 3D. Copy and paste another one of these guys here. Put it in front, move it around. All right, I'm gonna do two views here, horizontally spaced. On this camera, I'm gonna choose uh, custom view. Whoa, wait a second. If I can push this back, it's actually moving in 3D. Right guys? Whoa! Now, why is this cool? I don't know, it's 3D. Everyone loves 3D, right? Um, I got a good idea for what I'm gonna do here. Okay, so we're gonna go into Chroma King, grab this layer here. Don't make me learn you, computer. All right, so we're gonna do the uh, key light. I'm not gonna do that super cool pro technique. I'm just gonna do key light. That looks good enough uh, for the purposes of this. Make a 3D layer. Uh-oh. Let's bring a... Uh, that, that tree is too far forward. Should I bring, yeah, I'll bring him forward and uh, scale him down. All right, so now, we're, uh, now that we have a, a set, this is a basic 2D set, um, <laughs> two and a half D set, pretty good set. Um, what we can do is we can right click, create a new camera. And cameras move in 3D space. Whoa, too close camera. Whoa, check that out, huh? So you're creating parallax by creating different planes of depth, right? So what I could do with this uh, camera is I can actually animate it over time and create like a cool sweeping effect like, welcome to tree land. <laughs> um, or you know, whatever you want. You can be more creative with it than I am. Um, but uh, again, to keyframe stuff, uh, very important, stopwatch. And then if we move into the future, like there or so. Now we've got a pretty tight animation. Yeah, you, you, you saw what I was doing, whatever. Uh, <laughs> great, cool stuff. Yeah, 3D layers. Um, but you can really go far with this. In fact, this is uh, basically a bunch of planes. And uh, uh, this was all created After Effects. So I mean, it's not the greatest 3D, but you can see that there's some separation here. So you can like create these crazy environments. You can, uh, say if you chroma key someone out, you can basically put them in front of a background and however many layers of separation you have, that's how much parallax you have. So pretty cool stuff. I like doing two and a half D stuff a lot. In fact, Scott Pilgrim, a lot of those virtual sets were two and a half D sets. Okay. Presentation time. Okay, oh, here. Let's uh, watch this video about how to make puppets. I'm going to use a user-defined mask to kind of draw around that arm. See, like right here, I'm just going to draw around the arm and separate it out that way. So I'm going to have two layers. I'm going to have one layer that's the body and one layer that's the arm. Remember that anchor tool that I showed you at the very beginning as far as like where things rotate? That's going to become important later on because when we start rotating things, we want it to rotate around a very specific point. So, I'm just going to finish cutting up that puppet here. So now I've got two layers. One's the body, one's the arm. So you can see arm, body. Just going to slide that into place there. See, just slide it in. There it goes. There it is. So um, <clears throat> it's uh, not perfect, right, if you go to close-ups. Now here's what happens if we start to rotate this, uh, this beast. Whoa! That's not what we want at all! Well, maybe it's what you do, but uh, that's if you're stupid. Okay, so we've got this anchor point tool again, right? And uh, we're just going to look at the uh, arm layer. And see that little tiny... Uh, I'm pointing at my screen like you guys can see it. See that thing in the middle? Yeah. Just click and drag on that guy. Push it up into the uh, where the hinge is. And then, lo and behold, we start to rotate the arm, it's correct. So again, you just, you just keyframe this uh, using the rotate uh, parameter. All right, so that's pretty much that tutorial. I'm gonna show you an advanced technique now because we all love, who loves compi? <laughs> all right, me too. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag in the, uh, this one here. I'm gonna choose a composition because I wanna separate all those Photoshop layers. And you're gonna see there's a lot. Okay, so we just open up this. This is the compi. We've got an A mouth. Um, we've got all sorts of mouths. Oh my gosh. 
Um, so what I'm going to do, this is a pretty advanced technique, so I'm going to use both hands. Okay, that was five seconds. That's, no, I don't want, okay, whatever. I'm just going to cut them here. I'm going to delete what I just created, and I'm going to stagger these guys like this. This is a super pro technique, um, only for pros. And I'm going to get rid of his body. We don't need his, uh, his body for this one. What we're doing now is we're just creating a mouth layer, a compy mouth layer. So here we have kind of open, really open, open again, closed. I'm going to make uh, closed the first one. And let's just slide this around. So we have closed, uh, oh, maybe put really open here. <coughs> I'm basically trying to create a, a range. So uh, here we got closed, open, more, more open, even more open. And we don't need this one because you know, we don't need it. Anyways, uh, grab these, layer, pre-compose, which basically flattens everything, moves everything into one composition. And we have the same composition here. I'm going to turn this off. So you can really see the mouth now, right? Okay, so what we can do is uh, right-click on this, enable time remapping. And I'm going to click on this keyframe, and I'm going to say toggle hold keyframes. So now what I can do is I can go to here and say uh, three. And oops, that's three frames. It's there. So I can basically memorize the values that I put in, and I can animate lip sync uh, this way by putting down keyframes. If I had audio, um, I could look at the waveform and kind of create an animation based on where the peaks and valleys are uh, using this technique. So with time remapping, what that means is I'm saying what time value do I want uh, this uh, frame to be at. Like even though I'm at two seconds of the composition, I'm saying let's make it at 21 frames or let's make it at uh, five frames even though I'm hanging out around two seconds. That's what time remapping is. And uh, hold keyframes means it's not going to animate between them. Well actually hold keyframes might be easier to show if I go to position. So position, toggle hold keyframes. So it's going to hold this position until I move it. So rather than, normally you know when uh, I move something, it would kind of ease between the two positions. This is just going to jump no matter what I do. Versus if I create a normal keyframe, let's just make a normal keyframe. And then I start to move it. Oh, there's no more footage. <laughs> now we go to timer mapping. Uh, timer mapping. All your options are under here, by the way. So timer mapping. Let's uh, choose something like that. Okay, so it disappeared because we basically ran out of footage in the pre-comp. So see how it's now smoothly transitioning between, uh, between that point? Well, kind of smooth. It's moving between the points versus uh, just jumping around. That's the difference between toggle and normal keyframes. In fact, while I'm here, I'm going to show you one of the best features about After Effects, Easy Ease. So if I right-click on a keyframe, go to Keyframe Assistant, we have an Ease option. I'm going to ease into this. So basically, instead of a hard stop, it's going to kind of smoothly go a little bit. It's kind of smooth, right? If I click on this keyframe and click on this graph, I can actually make it smoother. So I'm just going to adjust this Bezier curve. So it's really fast, and see how it kind of slows down as it reaches its destination? Pretty cool, huh? Kind of. I don't know. It's cool. Uh, trust me on that one. <laughs> oh, right. Never mind. I, I was just making a puppet. <laughs> So there's the mouth layer. Now what we need to do is, uh, let's look at, back at Brushy here, the Brushy comp, or the, the pre-comp. I'm just going to grab his body here, the body and blank eyes, copy-paste. Switch this back. And I'm going to put these beneath here. And I'm going to make them visible. This eyeball makes them visible. So now we got, whoa, it's like it's alive. It's like it's alive. Okay, so, um, to make the pupils, uh, let's use some uh, simple geometry. Make, uh, make a solid that's black. And use this, remember this guy? The ellipse tool. Now we can just basically draw on. I'm just going to get rid of the mask visibility here. Oops. Grab this layer, move it up here. Now we've got a pupil that we can move around. Pretty sweet, huh? And again, keyframing, press P for position, or if you twirl this down, you have all these options. Keyframe, keyframe, and you can move it around. So as you can see, really easy to create your own Adult Swim cartoon. <laughs> all right. So actually, you know, that was, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much. What, what we're going to do now, you're all pros. You're all pros. 
so what we're going to do now is we're going to watch my demo reel. And I want uh, you to uh, kind of look at specific shots. And if you see something you want to know how to do, let's just start like a QA. and a like you, um, The presentation is pretty much over, but I will answer any questions you have about any shot in this or in Pokemon or in Scott Pilgrim or, or whatever. Even, I'll even answer questions about shots I didn't do. <laughs> Thanks. OK. <laughs> The volume is good. What? Uh, no! It looks like you've just been rickrolled. Need any help? What? Copy, how'd you do that? Your demo reel? Uh, I taped over it. You taped over my demo reel? I'm magical. We both know this thing. You know this thing. Give you up, let you down, mess around, or hurt you. Can we watch my real demo real please, Okay. There was nice to beat you! I'm I'm never gonna give you up. Bye-bye! Bye, Copy. Alright, here we go. The guy. Yeah. The guy. Thank you. All right, so who has uh, any questions? How do you find out what you're going to start to use? Like, what, you know what you need to, to create. How do you kind of figure out what effects you're going to have? Yeah, what's the thought process, basically, as far as like what effects to put uh, when and where? Um, mostly what uh, we do in compositing, again, is breaking things up, putting an alpha channel on them, right? So what I'll look for is, what is the least amount of work I can do? <laughs> uh, so what I do in order of operations pretty much all the time is uh, I go from chroma keying to luma keying, and if I can't do either of those, maybe I can do roto brush, and if all else fails, uh, rotoscoping. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as far as like what um, what to do beyond that, um, it's really a matter of going into After Effects and um, seeing what every single effect does. Because like, we haven't really been effects heavy on the After Effects part of this tutorial. But uh, the basic idea is like, there's all these things that you can look at. Like, what does this do? I don't know. What does this do? I don't know. Um, you have to click on it to find out. It's kind of like a surprise. <laughs> um, but they're grouped in a good way. Like, if I want to blur something, OK, these are all the blurs I got. There's a lot of them. Um, Exactly. You start to know where to go for certain things. Again, like you can, you can pretty much like not even use effect in After Effects. You could just like say if I want to make Compi uh, have like a cool texture on him. Remember that uh, Luma key? Or actually, no, it was a uh, uh, blending modes. This uh, really neat smoke layer I saw. We can drag that into here, and I just put that uh, on top here. And um, I can just change the blending mode to add. And uh, let's just turn off the background here. It's, it's going to add despite, like, even if copy's not there. So in fact, let's copy and paste the body, put it above that smoke layer. And what I'm going to do is do an alpha mat. Whoa! So that's using all the stuff that we kind of looked at today. What I'm doing is I'm using his actual body as the alpha channel for what's going to show in the smoke layer, right? So if I can move the smoke layer around, but it's going to only uh, fill in the parts that are his body, this layer here. Um, so uh, you can basically do stuff like that, right? Um, uh, using just basically how you can combine things. Using blending modes, like if you shoot it for real, that's the best way. If you create stuff digitally, um, it's harder to make it look real. but um, I find compositing, digital compositing, like, has anyone seen King Kong, the Peter Jackson one? Yeah. Like, what they did is they shot miniatures and they composited people digitally onto them. That's what, that's the stuff that looks best. Or like, you know, the thing. That was all done practically, right? If you shoot it practically, it looks really good. What a lot of people do in the industry is they shoot things practically, but then they get rid of the puppet strings. Like, they'll either use fishing wire to make things float, and then they'll digitally comp it out. So, rather than create all your elements digitally, you just combine them, composite them together. Combining things, essentially, is the name of the game. 